So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's Robin Norgren, and you are listening to Creativity, Montessori, and the Meaning of Life. Meadowlark sings, and I greet him in return. This is a poem by Mary Oliver. Meadowlark, when you sing, it's as if you lay your yellow breast upon mine and say, Hello, hello. And are we not of one family in our delight of life? You sing, I listen. Both are necessary if the world is to continue going around, night heavy, then light laden, though not everyone knows this, or at least not yet, or perhaps has forgotten it in the torn fields, in the terrible debris of progress. I'd like to introduce you to Jennifer Swift. The name of her business is Bird from a Wire. Her creative influences include nature, line, color, and pattern. Her preferred medium of creativity is wire and fabric to stitch her wire sculptures. Make sure to look her up online. Jen Swift is an at-home mother and artist from Plymouth, Minnesota. She loves to play, experiment, and just enjoy the process of art. She began creating her wire and fabric sculptures after her son was born and has taken the idea and turned it into an Etsy business and into a publishing business. She's been featured in multiple issues of Sew Somerset and Somerset Ho and just had a book published. The book, Creative Bloom, Projects and Inspiration with Wire and Fabric, and she has a blog, Art as Usual and these allow her to encourage and inspire others to lead a creative life. I asked her what were one of her earliest creative memories and she said, my mother was a teacher so my brother and I would spend hours after school each day as she finished up her grading and paperwork. I remember filling a huge chalkboard with elaborate drawings of princesses, dresses, cloud cities inspired by Star Wars. I love the ability to draw lots and draw big. My mother says the drawings were always very detailed. I still like to draw big, but I enjoy my detail work too. The wire uses the same big movements to sculpt as my drawings, and the stitching I add allows me to calm down and focus on the details. Did you have a creative habit that made a smooth transition into your adult life? Actually, Jen said, I had lots of stops and starts with a ton of teenage angst thrown in. I drew from the time I was little and as I grew my drawings would evolve. First the princess dresses, then landscapes, then mountains, waterfalls, trees. All the while they became more and more detailed. When I had hard things happen or something about life confused me, I would go back to those inspirations, mountains, waterfalls and trees. I processed everything through my art, and things would make sense for a little while. I also thought of my ability to create art as something that was unique to me and helped me to get through the horrible, self-hating teenage years. Then, when I got a, a job after college, I used my art skills daily to design flowers, but didn't have the energy to create at home, too. I asked her, if you had a creative hiatus, what event or circumstance brought you back to your creative lifestyle? Jen said, when my son was born, I went into a big depression and both my mother and husband encouraged me to do art again. I felt God answered my what do I do now prayer by handing me wire and fabric. 
How has God been a part of your creative process? Jen says, I see the Holy Spirit is whispering in my ear. All the creative choices I make from what color to use to what I paint or sculpt are inspired and I truly feel that inspiration comes from God. I tried creating from me and I felt empty. I need God to help me and to fill me. He does that through my time with nature, through my love of flowers, trips to the quilt store, or the quiet times when I sketch. Here's a quote from the book, The Work of the Chariot. When a man takes one step towards God, God takes, one, takes more steps toward that man than there are sands in the worlds of time. Breathe. The Psalms have been oxygen for me when I find I cannot get past the overwhelm of my circumstances. I walk through life going through the motions, feeling God's presence, but also feeling a sense of agitation for the lack of control I have over the things going on around me. My heart feels bruised and I sense the resentment that is building from holding it all inside. I can feel it from the inside of my being and I am finding it hard to breathe. Reflect, ref refine, refocus, refuel. The Psalms are like a beautiful classroom in which to learn, grow, and change. These are the four tools that I find at work within these words that help me get through the distancing I feel myself sometimes doing with God. Refining. From the places of bruising that either are inflicted on me by others or are of my own doing, the things I see that I cannot behaviorally change or simply get over that are eating me alive rather than causing growth, change, forgiveness in me. The ability to take the worst parts of me and the best parts of me and make peace with all of it, the whole of me, true wholeness. Reflecting. Every so often, the nuts and bolts of any human experience must be examined. Specifically, the means by which I cater to my own needs and preferences over the needs of others is worth an assessment. The manner in which I experience my neighbor and the, lab and the level of awareness in which I emphasize or empathize with their joys and sorrows. The degree in which I see God and the world's inner workings must have a viable place for honest assessments. The Psalms offer just the laboratory for this exercise. Refocusing. The moments in life when I have been inoculated with the cares and pressures of the world need to be noticed. I need new eyes, don't you? I need bandages. I need urgent care. I need experienced hands to care for my heart and all that aches in me. I need accurate information with the best interest of my soul in mind laced throughout. The Psalms give that to me. Refueling. My daughter has this saying when she's tired, I need car gas. She needs something put inside her to get her going. She's equated it with a car needing gas. The type of refueling that happens with the breathing in of the words in the Bible, of God's ideas and thoughts and aspirations, the Holy Spirit's touch. We can experience this in the world, but I think our inner being needs to be ready to see it. The moments of beauty come in, dance with us briefly, and leave a residue of constancy of who God is in light of circumstances, good and bad. Can God pursue you? And are you open to his pursuit? Here's a question for you. The terms love and trust. What kinds of feelings do they bring up for you? What do you think the meaning is behind the verse, come to me like a little child? Are you at this moment open to God's pursuit? And what is hindering that process? Today, I'd like you to take some time with the Psalms. And it's really not that, um, it may seem a little bit daunting sometimes when you go to the Bible, because you don't know where to start. The best part about 
um, certain parts of the Bible at, at least, is we have things in our everyday life that are similar to it. So it helps us to kind of make the connections and make it less overwhelming. That's why I think the Psalms is a good place to start. The Psalms are basically poems. And if you can feel the lightness or the heaviness in a poem, in, in the conciseness of the world of the words, you find that same thing happening in the Psalms. So you can just start with Psalm number one, or you can just kind of pick one and uh, just begin. But I would encourage you, if you've never tried the Bible, that might be the place to, to step in and just give it a try and allow that to be the conversation with God as the verses come off the page and maybe touch your heart. Thank you so much for stopping by. Remember, this is a series called Your Creative Peace, Finding and Deepening Your um, Inner Voice While Communing with God. It's a book I wrote about 10 years ago, and you can find it over um, on my website. You can find all my links over on uh, Instagram, and my Instagram handle is at Robin, R-O-B-I-N, underscore Norgren. N-O-R-G-R-E-N.